So, by popular request, here is a section of North American wall. And for those of you who are not in North America, our walls usually consist of two by four studs vertically and base plates and top plates also made of two by fours. And I should point out two by fours refers to two inches by four inches, but they're really one and a half inches by three and a half inches for historical reasons. But that's the typical wall and as requested, right through the middle is some 14-2. On the other side, or in this view, back side of the wall, we have some drywall or sheetrock or whatever you call it. That would normally be on the inside wall of a room. More importantly, between these two studs, we have some fiberglass insulation, which would be typical of an outside wall. And between these two studs, we just have airspace, which would be typical of an inside wall. The wire goes right through the center. And to protect it, if this was an inside wall, we have metal protectors to prevent anybody from putting a nail into the wire or drilling into the wire, which would, of course, be a bad thing. To make this more realistic, I have some thin sheets of plastic covering this side of the wall. If it was an outside wall, we'd normally have plywood or OSB here. And if it was an inside wall, we would just have another layer of drywall. But the reason I wanted to cover it was, was to restrict the airflow because that might be quite key to what happens in terms of burning and smoke and stuff inside the wall. Now, it would be kind of boring if we couldn't see what was going on with the wire. In the fiberglass, I made a little hole. It shouldn't change the test results too much. And it's actually not unrealistic because sadly, mice tend to bury through this sort of fiberglass, which actually is our real pain. If you're wondering why there is an air pocket here, well, it's because I didn't have enough fiberglass and it won't really change the amount of heat that this wire experiences. We also have, like in all the other tests, our ammeter and our voltmeter, which switches off automatically at the most inopportune times. And over there, we have my vintage arc welder to generate the currents. There were a number of people who suggested in the comments in the last video that it was unrealistic because arc welders spit out DC. A vintage arc welder like that one is AC only. So yes, we're dealing with true AC in this test. So with all that said and done, I think we're ready to start testing. I will set the current at 15 amps the rated current, and maybe we'll just let it sit there for a few minutes. It's about 15 minutes later, and I think temperatures have stabilized. Um, let's see if we can get a temperature reading here. And I'm a little bit dubious of this thing. I'm seeing it a maximum of about little over 26 degrees, 26.2 or 3, that's Celsius. And if we were to compare it to, say, down here, that's about 24.3. So maybe, if this thing is to be believed, there's maybe a 2 degree rise in here. Let's see if we can measure this wire. Maximum I'm seeing is about 25.3 degrees, so maybe a degree rise for the wire in open air two degrees for the insulated one. We'll now crank it up to 20 amps and it should survive that quite nicely. 15 minutes at 20 amps and everybody who said test it with insulation, well that was a great idea. I'm reading in the insulated cavity, 29.8, 29.9 degrees Celsius. 
so almost 30 degrees Celsius. If we look, well, first of all, down here, we're way down about to 26 degrees or so. And if we try and measure the wire directly, I'm getting, what, 27.3. So quite an increase over here where we can see the wire through the insulation and one wonders what it might be inside. So I think we'll increase the current to 30 amps. In other words, twice the rated current of our wire. And I don't expect anything dramatic to happen, even in the insulated section. So once again, we will resume looking at it in about 15 minutes when temperatures have stabilized and we can see how hot it is in the insulation. Okay, so we're at 15 minutes at 30 amps. And let's look at the temperature. And we seem to be at around 30, almost 37 degrees Celsius in our cavity here. By the way, I'm fighting road noise. Every farmer and car seems to be driving by, so I stop recording while they go by and start, so the video might be a bit jittery. If we look down here for reference, we seem to be at about 26.6. And on the wire itself, maybe 28.6. So we'll crank up the current to 40 amps now. Let's look at the temperatures. So I'm seeing about 56 Celsius over here. And what are we getting down here? 30. And then up at the wire, 36 maybe, 37. So a considerable increase in temperature here, as we would have expected. And to put things in perspective, I did a bit of a back of the envelope calculation and the section of wire in here and the section of wire in there are each dissipating about 25 watts at this current. And if I feel the wire, it's now too hot to touch for any length of time. It's not melting yet, but it's probably pretty close. So we're at 50 amps. This should start getting really interesting. And it looks like the wire is bubbling inside the fiberglass. Yeah, so at 50 amps, we're definitely seeing the wire in the fiberglass disintegrating. Let me feel the wire at the other side. Oh, it's hot, but it's still okay. So I would suggest we're at the point of imminent failure. Let's take some temperature measurements. I saw 67 Celsius for a second here, 69. Ooh, now there is some smoke coming out over here. And yes, you can see it's melting where it goes through the 2x4, which is really not surprising because that would be holding in the heat as well. So very obviously 50 amps is too much for the wire in insulation and where it's going from the insulation through the 2x4. What's the other 2x4 like? Interestingly, everything is fine at the other 2x4, but now I'm seeing smoke and discoloration from the fiberglass. And I don't know how well you can see it, but there is now smoke circulating within the fiberglass hollow, but also going up between the fiberglass and the plastic. Now, <coughs> oh, that's vile. I've got a break in the plastic here, and we're getting some of that smoke coming out through here, which is sort of a bit unrealistic. But, well, maybe it isn't. That smoke would probably be going through and filling this cavity.
and certainly lots of discoloration around here and here and the fiberglass is somehow emitting some brown fluid. You can now see some smoke making its way up between the fiberglass and this wall and filling the area that's open here. But if we look where it's really interesting, we now have a very large discolored area here. I can feel the heat, so if this was plywood, it might start to burn. And there's smoke pouring out here as well as going up here. And I guess we should try and take a temperature. Wow, now I'm seeing like 160 Celsius. So there's clearly bad things happening in there. So there's now a lot of smoke escaping here and out the top here. Actually, the plastic's buckling. Yeah, again, 159, 160 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, that's really going. Certainly not as dramatic as the other video. I wonder if it means it won't get as many views. One thing we've certainly demonstrated is how much the insulation does affect the current limit, or overcurrent limit, I should say, of the wire. Yeah, this is cooling off now. So clearly what's happened is somewhere in there a short has occurred. And if we look over here, the wire on this side is burning as well. So I think we've definitively destroyed it. And like last time, just for fun, let's hook it up to the full 270 amps of the welder and see what happens. So this is the welder, full blast, no current limiting. A catastrophic short has occurred in our system. Let's see what happens. Oh. The best part was over here. So really, not that dramatic a video. I'm gonna just put out the fire. So I think the interesting thing to do would be to pull off the plastic and see what's happened inside. And what do we have? Look at that. So there is a lot of discoloration around the fiberglass. And this sort of confirms my suspicion that there's more than just fiberglass in here. The fiberglass is probably held together with some somewhat combustible or charable gunk. And Wow, our wire has completely charred. Oh, and I don't know if you can see it. That's where it's failed. And I guess really much more so than any of the others, the insulation and the outer cladding of that wire is just carbonized almost. Now I should point out I used two sections of two inch thick fiberglass rather than the usual three and a half inch stuff just because that was available in small batches and it made it easier to take apart like this. So let's pick apart this some more. It's interesting, right next to the wire the fiberglass is almost white so whatever charred may be burned away. It's actually still quite hot. On the inside we have the same sort of effect white where the wire was then black charring and you can hear see here the residue from the smoke carrying whatever vile components were up and presumably depositing them here and perhaps the most dramatic result is really over here the wire is completely shredded and in pieces over on the other side it's largely intact other than where it goes through the 2x4s. So as a lot of people had expected and predicted and wondered, 
the insulation does make a considerable difference in terms of how much overcurrent a wire can handle. Interestingly, it probably also prevented the spread of some of the fire. So that's a good thing. So I think this brings this video to an end. Very interesting result. Everybody who figured the insulation would make a big difference, well, you are absolutely right. I'm going to do one more test with this fake wall, maybe after drilling some new clean holes for the wires, and that is using spray foam type insulation, which is getting very common. And you can either have it done professionally covering whole walls or use little cans to shore up certain sections where air is leaking through. And it would be interesting to see how that affects the survival rate of wire under extreme stress. So, see you next video.